Hey everyone, this is a quick rundown of the Midjourney updates from October. The big news last month is the release of Midjourney's new image editor that lets you upload and edit your own images for the first time. This is huge news and I know a lot of you are excited about using it. The new editor includes familiar features like repainting and reframing, but also introduces the new retexture feature. Retexture utilizes depth control net to transform the style of your image while preserving the core structure of the image. I've been testing out the new editor and in my last video I share everything from product mockups and home remodels to stylized versions of my own drawings. Now they are being careful with the rollout because they're testing a new moderation system, so access is currently limited to three groups. Users who've created over 10,000 images, yearly subscribers, and those who've been subscribed for the last 12 consecutive months. Be sure to check out this video if you want a more in-depth look at the new editor and how it differs from the basic editor. Looking ahead, we've got some updates coming to personalization. They're working on a faster setup process for activating your personalization profile, and you'll be able to create multiple personalization profiles. It sounds like there will also be a way to upload a collection of images such as a mood board and Midjourney will define a style from that, which could be really interesting. If you haven't tried personalization yet, head over to the personalize page and get your profile set up. And if you want a personalization profile for Niji, Midjourney's anime trained model, go to tasks and rank aesthetics for Niji. Batch eight is also on the horizon, which will let you generate a grid of eight images instead of four, helping you explore more variations at once. I'm not sure if batch eight jobs will use the same or more GPU time compared to a regular job, but I guess we'll find out soon enough. Both the personalization update and batch eight are expected to come out in the next few weeks. Midjourney is also getting ready to share insights from the demographic and psychometric surveys that you may have participated in. They will be writing some blog posts and may create some kind of explorer tool that will let users interact with demographic linked style preferences. V7 finished its first phase of training and is moving into the second training phase. This V7 model has about three times more data than V6, which means V7 will have more knowledge and better understanding. It sounds like V7 will be quickly followed up with a 7.1 release, which will be trained on an even more comprehensive data set. At the moment, I'm hopeful that we'll see a V7 release before the end of the year. The team is still working on a V6 video model, which will focus on image to video. They aren't planning on doing text to video with this release. No word on video length or resolution, but they are really emphasizing speed, simplicity, and good quality. No major news with 3D development, just that it's in the training phase. And if I had to guess, we'll probably see image to video released before 3D. And a couple of miscellaneous updates. If you've created shortcuts on Discord using the prefer options commands, you can now use those shortcuts on the website. If you're not familiar with custom shortcuts, you can go watch this video, but basically it's a way to store things like character reference URLs, style references, and other prompt text into a shortcut that you can include in your prompt. You still have to set up the shortcuts on Discord, but you can now use them when you prompt on the website, which is wonderful because now every time I want to use my Wesley character reference, who's shown up in multiple videos now, I just type dash dash Wesley after the CREF parameter and it adds him in. Also, the latest from the storytelling team is that they're getting ready to share a preview of what they've been working on. As I mentioned last month, it sounds like the storytelling tool will be more focused on world building rather than just image creation and will have a different user interface. I'm really excited to see what they've been working on, so keep an eye on the events in Midjourney's Discord. There's also a new Luma events calendar, which I don't think a lot of people know about, but you can go here and subscribe to the calendar to stay up to date with all of the events. So that's it for the October roundup. If you found this update helpful, please consider liking, subscribing, and maybe even joining the Patreon community where I share monthly prompt collections and mid-journey guides. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.